and let's go ahead and tap this here. And we have our Mana Enchanter all set up. Hello and welcome to another episode of Regrowth Reloaded. Okay, so we are over here in our area where we have our um, crafting storage unit, uh, the co-processor thingamabob that we built in the last episode, along with our ME interfaces and molecular assemblers. And as I mentioned in the end of the last video, that I was going to watch a video on how to um, uh, automate the inscribers and I was just going to do that between episodes. So here's the setup here. Um, I will include a link to um, Sentinel M, Sentinel H MC's channel. Um, uh, it is his design. Um, I will uh, give you the link to uh, this in particular. He does have a really good series on uh, doing things with um, AE and uh, uh, there's a couple of automation things and this is one of uh, the ones that he did that I really enjoyed so essentially we have the um, three uh, inscribers on the bottom for the different um, uh, presses we got uh, the logic press here we have the calculation press here and we have the engineering press here and on the back, this one behind here, if we can get in there, that's the silicon press. So there's these three plus that one. There's the four with the presses. And this is the one that has nothing in it that everything gets combined together on. Uh, so we have a connection here uh, from our ME network. I also put in another terminal over here just so that we can do things from this side as well. It comes into this interface. There's another interface here and, and yada, yada, yada. It does all this kind of stuff. His video will explain it a lot better than I ever could. There is one minor difference between his video and what we have to do here in the regrowth mod pack. And that is in this particular uh, storage bus that's in the back of this. Um, in his video, you just put redstone in here, but because um, Regrowth uses um, uh, it differently, uh, we have to put in the um, different chipsets depending upon what we're doing. The quartz, the diamond, and the golden chipset for the three type of uh, processors that we're going to be generating from this thing. Um, also, uh, in these storage buses, instead of putting diamonds, you put in the diamantine electron tube. This one's the Certus Quartz Electron Tube instead of Certus Quartz, and this one's the Gold Electron Tube instead of the uh, gold that you need for that. So, let's uh, do a couple of things over here real quick, and then we're going to be doing some work um, in the Britannia area today, because there's something that I, I want to work on there. So, the first thing on my list is that I want to create a networking tool so let's come in here and let's come in and let's look it up network tool which is this thing here and that is a certus quartz wrench which we already have a, an illuminated panel a calculation processor and a chest now I don't think we have everything we don't have the illuminated panel right now so let's go ahead and um, click on that We'll see if we can pull one of those up go ahead and craft that we'll toss them in there and then we should be able to go ahead and craft that and there we have our networking tool now this has a couple of different modes to it um, which I'll have to learn how that how it, all that works but I know that you can um, put cards in here and that that get applied to things there's a, a mode that you can Put it in to um, see things behind the facades but it works just like your wrench as well so next thing we're going to make are 
cable anchors. Now I've already made some, so let me just show them to you. Anchors, and let's just look up the, the recipe on that, and that is any piece of metal with a quartz cutting knife, and that is made up of two service quartz, or I think nether quartz as well, an iron ingot and two sticks makes that. I've already got one of those. Um, and then you combine that, let me exit out of here with um, our anchors. Let's see, anchors, and CHO. Look up the recipe again with your metal in there. And I guess she's three cable anchors. And I've already got a bunch of them already. And then you use cable anchors, you can attach them to your cables and um, they can be decorative to make it look like your cables are attached to the wall. Um, it also, if it will prevent two cables running side by side from connecting to each other. But we're gonna use them to make facades. Now I've already made some facades, but we'll take a look at that as well. And I made these, um, these ones here and I made a stone one. And I also made these ones here, but um, let's just take a, let me go ahead and grab these ones here. And Basad, B-A-C-A-D-E. And uh, is that the right ones? Now these are the ones that are used with build craft pipes. All right. Yeah. And that's for the build craft pipe ones. Cable, let's try cable facade. Cable facade. Yeah. So it can be any block in the center surrounded by four cable anchors will make four facades. And what these are used for is to cover up the cables. So if I were to come in here, let me get these ones out that we have. You see, can I disconnect this? Okay, that just shows me network details. All right, let's just try it. We'll apply that there on that side of the cable. Here, can I do it in here? No, I think I, oh no, I can just click on that. Okay, there, there. There now it just looks like it's part of that um, stack. And now the only thing is, is um, the, con the it doesn't connect the textures on on these particular ones, but it's hidden the cable at least, so I'm good with that. All right, let me put these away. Move that out. I'm going to put my network tool in there. And those were the uh, basic things that we we're going to do. So let me run over to Botania area and I'll be right back with you. All right, we're here in our Botania area. And you might notice here that I've got another ME crafting terminal over here. And yes, this is hooked up to our ME system. I did run a cable all the way over and attach to this drawer controller so we can find all of this stuff in our ME system here, as well as be able to come in here and, and be able to craft things that we're going to need. So I've also put some um, lenses on a few of these mana spreaders because I added an additional mana pool over here and extended our room back a bit. And that's because what I want to do today is we're going to do a bit of botanical enchanting. And there's a special uh, way of doing that. So let's take a look in the Lexica Botania. And um, I should have it in here. Is it mystical items? No. Let's see. Enchanting. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Under artifacts, bubbles, off of NC. Enchanting. Enchanting with mana. There we go. So 
By utilizing the magical power emitted from mana pylons, a structure that can enchant items with books without consuming them can be created, called the mana enchanter. Constructing one of these requires a fair amount of space and materials alike. To construct the mana enchanter, one requires as well as fair amount of space, 17 obsidian blocks, 10 mystical flowers of any color, 6 mana pylons, and a lapis lazuli block. The instructions on how to assemble this structure are in the following pages. So this is what our um, enchanter area is going to look like. So let's go ahead and hit visualize. Uh, actually, let me unvisualize this. I want this over here. Let me kind of stand in the center here. And now let's visualize it and see if we can kind of put this in a spot where we want it to be at. And I think, yeah, I think that'll work there. All right, you go ahead and exit out of here. Now, is this above ground or is this below ground? Okay, it looks like I've got it below ground, so that's good. So let's come in here and I've got everything that we're going to need to do this. So I've got the 17 obsidian, I've got 10 mystical flowers, I've got six mana pylons, I've got some sparks that we're going to use, and I've got our lapis lazuli block. So I'm also going to need my shovel. And let's go ahead and get this, start digging this up. Now there's like a Design like this. Let's five this way. Five this way. And then we just kind of dig out these ones here and there. So it's kind of got this cross pattern in the center. So let's go ahead and put down our obsidian. Be careful because you know how fun it is to dig up obsidian. Here, there. And we got that part done. Let's see, we've got our lapis block. Let's go ahead and pop that sucker down there. Now we need to put down our flowers. Again, these can be whatever color flower you want. I'm just doing them all in blue. Okay, and then last we've got our six mana pylons. Each go Above the flowers. Let's see if I can do this. Nope, it won't let me do it that way. Let me see. Let me go ahead and pull these out real quick. Where's my sixth one? There it is. Let me come over here and grab some dirt or something real quick. Dirt. Actually, I had some right there in my... Silly me. Okay. That out of the way. Do it like this then. pylons on top of those. Bring the dirt back up. Okay, now we'll put our flowers back down.
and it says structure complete. Let me go ahead and get my wand of the forest here. And let's go ahead and tap this here. And we have our mana and channel all set up. All right, next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and attach some sparks to it. So I'm going to put a spark on top of here. I think shift, there we go. And then attach one here. Now, this uses a lot of mana to do this. So using sparks is the best way to do this. To, so we got a full pull here. This should be able to pull from that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the book again and let's finish up uh, what it has to say here. After the construct, construct is done, right click the lapis block with the wand of the forest and the, intent, and the enchanter should form. In order to utilize the enchanter, one would place via right click the item to be enchanted in the enchanter itself and drop enchanted books inside the circle around it. Items that are already enchanted can't be placed in the enchanter. To start the enchanting, right click the enchanter with the wand of the forest. It will scan the books around and once it's done, a spell circle of sorts will appear around it indicating the books can be safely picked up again. After the enchanting begins, the enchanter will require mana. It can be fed via one of two ways, either via mana bursts or nearby sparks by placing a spark on top of the enchanter, the, la the latter being much faster. When enough mana is gathered, the enchanting process will finalize and these enchantments will be applied to the item. The amount of mana required depends on the rarity of the enchants enchantments being applied, their level and the total amount of enchantments. If any book has more than one enchantment, only the first will be accounted for. During the enchanting process, the item cannot be removed, but it can after the process has been completed. Note that if at any point the component of the construct is removed, it will revert to its original lapis lazuli block form. Okay, so what I want to do with this is I want to enchant my armor. And um, what this thing is really cool is that you can use your books on it and keep the book so you don't lose it uh, when you enchant an item like you do with an anvil. So, right now I've got, you know, I've got my wonderful uh, Terra Steel armor, but it has no enchantments on it. So, let's go ahead and let's, um, let me go ahead and pull these off real quick. Like this. And then we're going to come over here and I've got uh, these bookshelves here that are just filled with books. Now, what I've been doing is when I've got enough levels I just kind of enchant some books and I see what I can get out of them and I'm going to I've got this protection four and I'm going to go ahead and put protection four on everything I don't know what else to really add I mean maybe let's see if we got um, sharpness smite efficiency unbreaking fortune punch uh, projectile protection there's another protection four there's a sharpness five uh, feather falling. Um, I'll probably put that on the shoes as well. Let's see, is there anything down here? Protection one, protection two, smite, punch, projectile protection, fire protection, unbreaking, power, capitalist. I have no idea what that is. Destruction, I have no idea. And eternal compass, I have no idea what those are. So, what we do is this. Let's start off with, go ahead and start off with the boots. So we come over here and we're going to right click our boots onto the top of the pedestal like that. Let me go ahead and get both of my books. So I'm going to be applying Feather Falling 3 and Protection 4 to these. So let's go ahead and toss the books down. They have to be in the circle here. So that one and that one and then you right click this like that and then it does this thing here as it's powering up and when it comes up like that you can pick up your books 
eight, and we're done. And right click on, I think we just right click there. We have our boots. And as you can see there, uh, Feather Falling 3 and Protection 4 on them. How much mana did this use? Uh, a little over a quarter of a pool. Let's see what it does. Let's uh, go ahead and do the helmet. We're just going to put the protection on it. Since we don't need Feather Falling on a helmet, that doesn't make sense and it wouldn't work anyway. So let's go ahead and throw, toss that down there. this do its thing there we go and we have our protection for on our helmet now and yeah that used a lot less because we we're only putting one enchantment on it so let me go ahead and do the other two the same way and I'll be right back with you all right, so now you can see I've got protection four on all four pieces of armor and the boots also have feather falling three on them. So we are good there. There's a couple more things that I want to craft though. Um, and let me just show those to you. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna craft what is known as a spell binding cloth. So let's come in here and let's look up the recipe. Spell binding cloth is right here and this is mana weave cloth around a mana pearl and let's take a look at the mana weave cloth and that is for infu mana infused string and mana infused string is just string in the mana pool so we need 16 string so let's um, come in here let's get some string real quick let's go ahead and grab 16 of them Got a mana pool right here that we can use. All right, so we got our 16 mana infused string. Then we can come in here and do this. That gives us our uh, four mana weave cloth. And then we need a mana pearl. We need one of those. Surround it by that, and that gives us our spell binding cloth. Now, what does the spell binding cloth do? Well, you use it on an enchanted item and it removes the enchantment from that item. So, let's say if I wanted to take one of these junkie books here, and I think this should work, let's go ahead and take this eternal compass one. It, I have no idea what it is, I will never use it. So if you just take the spellbinding cloth and the book and you combine them together, I guess it doesn't work with books, but it does work with like uh, swords or armor or whatnot, and it will remove the enchantment from that item. So let me go ahead and put that back, and we're just going to put this away for now, because the next thing I want to do is let's get our enchanting table out of here. I want to put it down over here in an area where it's going to be able to see our two our two pylons there so we can still use it. Now that'll go up to 16. Let me see if I can Figure out, let's see, let me move this. There should be a spot where we can place it where it will still get the two pylons. We'll work here. Yes, okay. So we can still use the pylons with this to get a level 30 enchant. The next thing I want to make is going to be a printing press. This is a bibliocraft thing. So let's take a look in here and let's look up printing press. Printing press. So this is made up of two iron ingots, a blaze rod, two slabs, a lightweight 
a weighted pressure plate and three blocks of iron. So let's go ahead and um, we have probably everything except for the weighted pressure plate. So let's uh, come in here. We can make one of those real quick. Go ahead and make our printing press. There we go. Next thing we're going to need is a type setting table to go with the printing press. Type setting table. And this is made up of a print press chase, two iron ingots, three slabs, two planks, and a redstone. So we need to make the, the print press chase. We're going to need to make a couple of these. First of all, they're just slabs and an iron ingot. I'm going to make uh, three of them, I think. Let me go ahead and toss the, um, one of those back in there. Go ahead and click on this. And that will give us our typesetting table. And the next thing we're going to need are reading glasses. Reading glasses, which are right there. And that's uh, two glass, an iron ingot, and two black dye of some sort. So, got all that. So, let's go ahead and make those. And there we go. So, um, one other thing I'm going to need are some books. Books. I'm just going to grab grab six of them, I think. And let's come over here and we're going to set this up. Oh, I need some dye as well. Um, ink. I'll go ahead and grab a bunch of those. All right. Now, I'm going to set this up over here. Now you might think this is kind of strange what we're doing, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a way for us to duplicate books. Now we don't really need to do it that way because we got this, but if you wanted to, you could um, take one of your enchanted books and duplicate it. So, for example, let's uh, come back in here. Let's, uh, we've got Sharpness 5. Uh, let's find one of the, the lower ones. Uh, smite. Is there Smite 5? I think there is. So, let's go ahead and take the this one here. And I think it's only going to pull the first enchantment off of there. But we're going to try it and see. And then we have to put on our reading glasses. Look like nerds, but that's okay. And that way we can look at the table and know what we need to do. So in, it should tell us anyways. So I believe we have to put the chase in there. We're going to put the book we want to copy in there. And then what? <laughs> hmm. Put that chase in there. And on the press here, you put ink in there, right on the plate there. Okay. Why is this not working? Okay, hang on a moment. I'm going to check the, the wiki on this and I'll be right back with you. All right, let's see if this works any better. Um, we're going to make a monocle instead of the reading glasses. Um, and this is four gold nuggets around a glass pane. If you look at monocle in here, all you get is the one for um, the Manaseer monocle. The other one doesn't show up for some reason. So that's that. 
Now this should work exactly the same. So what you should be able to do is put the monocle on and then you should be able to look at the table and it should be telling us stuff, but it doesn't seem to be working. So I wonder if it is something that they had removed. Does it fit in any of these other spots? No, it only goes there. Because the next thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, let me uh, get back here real quick. And that is, to place an enchanted book on the typesetting table in the lower left slot to create an enchanted plate, shift click the book with an empty hand. Okay, shift click the book, shift click the book with an empty hand. Doesn't do anything. Now you're supposed to have enough levels. Now I let me try something real quick here. Let me go ahead and uh, grab a stack of those. Let's get ourselves up to level 30. Shift click with an empty hand. Doesn't do anything. Let's try a different book. Maybe it doesn't like the ones with multiple enchantments on them. So let's uh, go ahead and do the Feather Falling 3 one. Place that there. Shift click. Doesn't work. I have a feeling that they um, turned this off in this pack. Now I have seen other people using it in in the pack, um, but those were older versions of this, so I have a feeling that the printing press is no longer an option for us here in this version of Regrowth. Okay, well that's it for this episode. Um, I was hoping that the printing press would work. The idea was that you could, um, you know, just use your levels, uh, craft some books, and then uh, Take those books and duplicate them in the printing press. Um, that way you can um, bring them up to the level that you want them to be at, get the good stuff, and then enchant your armor using the, the mana enchanter. But uh, that doesn't appear to be the case anymore. So if you guys have any luck with using the printing press in uh, the 1.02 um, version of this pack, please let me know what I'm doing wrong, and I will try it again. So, until next time, this is Desert Rat. Have a good one. Goodbye.